hi guys welcome back to my channel and today's video i'll be talking about one of the toughest decisions that i had to make it has been a long time coming to share this experience with you guys so let me just go straight to the point right okay okay so before i get into the video this is not to bash my old church or if you're here for clout gossip or preen or anything like that this is not that kind of video it's all done in love and in respect when i was around 16 years old an old childhood friend came up to me and was like you know what you've got to come to this church it's full of so many young people you really love it you've got to go so i was like okay cool i'm gonna I'm down, I'm gonna go with you. So I went with her and they were doing a Truth Behind Hip Hop. So they were showing several videos about Truth Behind Hip Hop. And it was just, to me, it was just so interesting about the subliminal things that happen within the hip hop industry and the music and everything. So I was like, oh, I really like it. And I love the vibe, I love the environment. I loved the fact that there were so many young people. So I was like, okay, you know what? I really like this place. So I remember coming home to my sister and I was like, May I found this really good church and at first I thought it was a youth church so I was just like yeah I found this really good youth church you've got to come with me they're doing videos about truth behind hip-hop let's go sort of thing come she came and she loved it too so at first I was just going to the youth group then and stuff like that then I found out that it was like not just a youth church they were like growing adults there so I was like okay cool so I got introduced to the Sunday service and some of the other services that happened during the weekday and started to go so I was heavily involved in the youth group for a very long time I believe seven years and um, and then I think in between I obviously had to go uni <laughs> so went uni and went to like a closer church near my uni which is still part of the same church so I was going there and to be honest guys I wasn't saved or anything during these like moments of time like I hadn't like given my life to Christ or anything like that but I was like okay let me go to this close by church because it's closer to me and it's still the same church so I'm gonna go I was going and I met some incredible individuals there as well and funny enough that during uni and during me going to that branch that's when i believed i became saved and i was like okay cool i'm taking this christian walk seriously i think i was in second year ending of second year of uni then i think i've done a video about titles and positions but i was basically doing a bit of training to be a particular position there and through like training through you know help support and things like that I got it so I managed to be that position and I lasted about three and a half years and I loved all the three and a half years and I kind of explained that more deeply in that video so make sure you check it out and then I think in my last maybe five years of going to my old church I started to experience a lot of issues so, I had one issue after the other, one issue after the other, which I think along the way, along the journey, I couldn't do my position anymore. Back, like there was just a lot of eventualities in the last five years I was there, or four. No regrets about what I went through and whatever. And even throughout that journey, even throughout when I was going through all of those eventualities, it could have been like the perfect time to be like, okay, you know what, I'm leaving. I can't do this anymore this is too tough this is too hard but I'm the type of person I'm I I'm very perseverant like I endure like I'm someone that doesn't give up easily and funny enough throughout even though I went through certain eventualities I didn't it didn't ever come across my mind like oh you know what I'm leaving this place I'm going I can't deal um, with what's happening here whatever I will heal I will recover whatever i did like i literally healed from the eventualities i went through i do always think to myself when i went through these eventualities that this could have been the perfect opportunity to be like goodbye megan megan but i never got a revelation from god to say go some would say maybe you were blinded but i'm glad that i didn't go at that point anyway god knew what he was doing i believe they made me like look at things from a completely different perspective 
made me mature in a lot of things as well and growth whoa because when you're going through certain eventualities yeah your dependence and reliance on god yeah is it just goes on some next level your trust your surrender i really thank god i am where i am today because honestly if it wasn't for those eventualities that i went through i don't think i would necessarily be here on camera being able to speak to you guys and share all my experiences as you can see through some of the other videos that i have been releasing over the past couple of months as you know lockdown happened i think with lockdown the good thing with lockdown is that you have time to think you have time to reflect on your life you have time to really really dig deep and really think about stuff yeah <laughs> i was thinking about my life i was thinking about where i want to be in the future i was thinking about my purpose and certain things that i want to fulfill certain things that i want to do and of course part of that was the my old church that i was going to oh my gosh is it time for change and i was kind of battling and i was like no like nah i'm not gonna i can't leave i'm gonna stay because of this because of that, because of that. So i told you guys about the position that i had which i don't do like i wasn't doing anymore but i had another responsibility there and that was like i was like no i don't want to let go of that ministry i really like what i do i really love working with my leader like i really enjoy it Mo a lot of people who knows me from my old church would know that i was really passionate about what i was doing <laughs> i just thought to myself that's not a good enough excuse like you can't stay in in that church because of you're in a particular ministry and you really enjoy it and love it and you just want to continue like but you know when you're just ignoring that whatever sort of thing oh my gosh my time is up like it is time for me to move on it's time for me to mm -hmm. Ra wow, God, during this lockdown, the sign you're telling me this is what you're letting me know. Because I'm stubborn, guys. To get through to me, <laughs> especially about my old church, very difficult for sure. I know that God was giving me certain signs anyway, but you know when you're just ignoring it, it feels like, ah, oh, I'm giving up. I'm the type of person that I don't give up. Like, if it's up to me, I'm the type of person, I'll still be in my old church for another 20, 30, 40, 50 years, you name it. And it's not just... <laughs> I know what some of you guys may be thinking. No, something bad must have happened for you to leave. But absolutely no, nothing bad happened to me. When I made a decision to leave, I literally had time to think. I was like, okay, it's time for me to move on. So this time around, I listened and obeyed. In my church, it's in a lot of other aspects. It's definitely a weakness and it's definitely a strength at the same time. In this case, it was a weakness because it was obviously, I'm a Christian, it's my church, I'm going there. So why on earth would I want to just leave? It's going to show that you've given up. It's going to show that, you know the stigmas that cut, go with when someone leaves the church, the stigmas like, oh, you've lost your faith or you've gone down spiritually or the enemy's got you or you don't believe in God anymore. Just a typical, like, stereotypical mindsets that come. So I was just like, bruh, like, I'm taking a leap of faith to just leave the place that I've been going for 14 years. I was like, do you know what it takes to make a decision and be like, okay, and try something new and different and explore my freedom in Christ. Let me just obey because I'm gonna do it, God. I said, I'm gonna do it. I'm going to do it. The hardest thing was to let my leader know. So I had been working with my leader for the past five years in that certain ministry and she is a great, phenomenal woman of God. Like words, I have learned so much from her. It's, it's literally unbelievable. So to me, it was just like, how am I going to tell my leader? But when you leave a place, like leave in a respectful way, let me at least just let her know, give her that respect and let her know. And also towards the ministry that I was working in as well. Like, when you resign from your job, you write a resignation letter, all right? I sent a really long message letting her know it's my time is up and I've decided to leave the, the church. And she was the first person that I told like, out of all my friends, my close friends, of course, she was not happy. She was gutted. She she said something so emotional. She said, it's God first, then her husband, then it was me. And I was just like, whoa. It's such a tough news for her. But, she, you know, she really, she just bl like blessed me, gave me good, nice advice and support in my new journey. 
and I was so grateful and I can't like I actually cried and I don't cry guys like I'm not even emotional like that but I cried like it was painful tears like I wasn't even like crying like hoo, hoo, but it was tears it was painful but even your family when you've been going to a place for so long in a place where it helped and supported you and led you to the bonds and the relationships that I built there as well there was incredible individuals there I'm also leaving them as well even though yeah okay we will still be in contact and in touch and message every now and then but it's, it's different when you're in the environment and you see them face to face you sit in service with them you talk you banter you know there's company when you've left it's like you're leaving your family in a sense as well I was just like oh boy I messaged my really close friends so I have a few close friends who are there I messaged them and not all of them only a few actually from my um the branch that I was going to but I had a few from different branches as well so I mm, sent them a voice note <laughs> I sent them a voice note and I was just like okay guys yeah right to tell decide to leave and whatever and with great pleasure like with great respect everyone was just so understanding everyone was just like okay you know what thank you for letting me know just blessings wishing me the best on my new journey and to me that was just so amazing and that i was surrounded by good support good network and amazing individuals who just got it i didn't have to explain much i didn't have to justify and say and give all of these maybe okay maybe one or two it's just like oh why why whatever which is natural but i didn't have to really explain and justify and be like oh, got it which was like a massive relief because there is this sense like okay am i gonna lose like my close friends that are there because i've left now because like let's be real guys when people leave a church they lose friends that like i have anywhere and i always see it like time always tells but at the end of the day like I was just like, I know the ones that I have and um, at that moment of time, I'm happy to let them know. Um, the aftermath is not being easy because when you've been in the place for like 14 years, you're used to doing things in a certain way. You have your own routine, a habit, things are, it's like a way of life. It's part of your day-to-day -day stuff that you do. Like church was definitely part of that. And I was attending quite a few days in that in the week. And then of course on Sunday, a few of my friends there that, you know, we'll go breakfast with each other and like talk, little things like, oh, I'm gonna miss that. And then of course there's, within the ministry that I was working with, there's just certain individuals that I was gonna miss. Part of it was teaching. So it's like, oh, I'm gonna miss teaching, watching the growth of individuals. Like, and just to give you a bit of background, so I was there from 16 to 30. So you can see that those are like core and prime years. So you can imagine how my mind was like when I left because my mind was just kind of a bit everywhere. It's like I, my mind didn't know what, what to concentrate on. Yo, it's a lot of years guys, 14 years, 16 to 30. So I felt a, a little bit lost. I can't lie, like in terms of my identity, who I am, um, it was just all over the place. It's like I had to do a lot of rediscovering about myself all over again. Because when you've been in a particular environment for 14 years, you can just imagine. I've done a video about like mental health. So you guys, make sure you watch it because I, I kind of give a little bit of an experience about that as well. Um, whoa, where do I go? What do I do? Like I've left and I don't know what to do with myself. So I spoke to a really good friend of mine and um, she gave me fantastic advice so we went uni with each other you know we, we've just been close ever since and she was just like you know what now you've gone make a sincere prayer to god and say you know what god i've gone i've left but lead me to truth lead me to the right place and you be at the center at the end of the day like you have to be the one that leads me to wherever you want me to go and i took that advice and i made a sincere prayer to god and I, please i just trust and i surrender as you're my father as a child i'm throwing myself into your hands into your care for you to lead me to the right place and 
God, hey! And can I just say, prayer is key. When making a decision like this or when you're in isolation, to continuously ask God to guide every step, every decision that you are making so that you are not deceived. He has really been leading me. I've been led to amazing individuals who have supported and helped me. I'm now part of a Bible study group, which I really like at the moment. It's not a church, but it's a Bible study group, which I go to. You're proper leading me to places. You're proper leading me to truth. You're proper guiding every path, everything. Even certain sermons that I watch online, he is proper leading me to that. I, re I would really advise to also watch American Gospel. There are certain opinions about it or on Netflix as well. Can't, it's not being butterflies. It's not being like, ha ha. Oh gosh, I've left. No, no, it has not been like that. It's actually been quite a difficult journey. Really interesting at the same time. Like lots of new discoveries, like unwinding old habits, traditions that I used to do or religious stuff that I used to do. Kind of getting rid of that as well. But then at the same time, also not forgetting the good things that I also learned at my old church. Trying to be very diplomatic at the same time. Keeping up with that because I did learn some good things. There's no deny about that. And it's also holding that. And it's managing like the aftermath of when you leave a church. I think with lockdown, I kind of got away with it a little bit because I didn't tell much people. So not many people knew only onto when lockdown rules was uplifted. Then I think maybe it became more apparent that I had left. But the aftermath hasn't been that easy as well because it's, it's a bit natural to be a bit paranoid or it's a bit natural to be like, ah, oh, what are people saying about me? Are they gossiping? Are they this? Or are they just praying? Or you, all sorts of thoughts come in your head. But then at the same time, it's also thinking, you know what, you need to look at the things in the lens of Christ and you need to make sure that you do not add to the narrative because sometimes there is that narrative that when someone leaves, they do certain things and they act like this and they act like that. And I'm not here to justify myself or anything to anyone, but it's to also remember that I am a child of God and I do need to look at things in the lens of Christ and how he would want me to deal with things. There might be some things that come against me or come to me that I may not like. I, you know, the natural response would be to react and whatever. But it's also no, like everything I do has to be in love. The way I act has to be in love. Even when I come across people, some people from my old church or if they, if some of them want to be in touch or contact me or whatever, not ignoring or being rude or disrespectful, but I don't know, they're still acting in love. One of the easiest things is to just shut everybody out. But one thing that I've learned is that I can't get, I can't erase history. I can't erase 14 years. I have to be wise in the way I carry myself in the way that I act, in the way that I treat people. I take that accountability to myself because I know that I live for Christ. I know that Jesus himself lives inside of me. So I have to also listen to the Holy Spirit, good counsel, and make sure that I do not act in, in a worldly response. That hasn't been easy because not only you, you leave a place that you were going for 14 years, but it's also kind of dealing with that aftermath as well. Can come with a shock in different ways, positive, negative, you name it. So guys, as you can see, I have been sharing some of my experiences in my other videos and I will be sharing other experiences in future videos as well. Those 14 years is a long time and it is impossible to cover everything in one video. But I just want to give like an overview of how it's been so far and my journey and my experience. So guys, make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe, make sure you support a sister. Mm -hmm.